Hey, David Brewster here with an episode of Chord Play, and this is Chords of Deftones. And Deftones formed in Sacramento, California in 1988 and kind of exploded on the scene in the early and mid 90s. And they were lumped into the new metal groups, you know, like Corn uh, and Limp Biscuit. And then by the time they released White Pony, they kind of broke from that pack and definitely found their signature sound and style. And Stephen Carpenter, the guitarist, is very interesting. He's always been forward thinking and definitely a modern, you know, mind of a guitarist. And he started initially with six and seven string guitars, eventually moved up to eight string. And then I did notice recently uh, when they announced their new album, Ohm, which I think is coming out next month in September, I think he's moved up to nine string guitars, which is insanity. Um, I currently only have six string guitars and a bass, you know, in my studio. I don't even have a seven string really. I've played seven strings and I've played uh, a few eight strings too. I actually played uh, Tosin Abbasi's eight string backstage at the House of Blues in Chicago when I interviewed him. So I'm familiar with seven and eight string guitars. I've never even touched a nine string, so I don't even know what that's all about. But this lesson's primarily going to focus on some other early music. We're going to be tuned down, but we're going to be using six string guitars for this. Something about Deftones I've always liked is, yes, they're a metal band and they can play heavy and brutal and, you know, screaming guitars and screaming vocals and everything. But then they also have this ambient kind of atmospheric side where they have this, this huge kind of sound that they tap into where it almost seems like you're floating out in space or something or driving late at night, you know, like on a highway or something, and you know, it just it kind of creates this mood in this uh, setting, you know, when you hear their music. And some songs that might start with this brutal, you know, onslaught and then suddenly you're like drifting out in outer space or the opposite. You know, maybe it starts with the ambient outer space and then suddenly it just starts, you know, moshing or thrashing or whatever. So it's interesting and definitely, um, you know, Carpenter's interest in like different effects and tones and these kind of little neat noises. You know, he's a master at dissonance and polyrhythms and things like that. You know, using open string drones and creating these kind of eerie and sinister sounds in their music. With the opening, that was My Own Summer from uh, Around the Fur. Uh, My Own Summer, Shove It, I think is actually the full title. But uh, definitely, it's one of the first songs I ever heard from Deftones. So I kind of locked on to them around 97, around, around the Fur. And then I had to go back and, you know, check out Adrenaline and some of their earlier stuff. But uh, I do remember watching this video on MTV and it had the sharks and the, you know, and all this stuff. And I just thought, man, that's brutal. And then uh, I bought the album. Next thing I knew, I was a fan. But, it, you know, it opens with the single note line. Um, we're technically tuned down a half step and then drop D. So it's like drop D flat. And um, it basically opens with a single note line. And then you have these kind of interesting, this kind of pattern of uh, one finger power chords. And then there's a, a flat five chord happening right here too. So it's something like this. And that's the way I've kind of, you know, chose to finger that. You actually could play that with one finger if you wanted to. But I try, you know, anytime I find rips like that, I try to use as many fingers as possible. You know, even if there is an easier way, I almost always try to find the harder way. You know, because as a guitarist, you don't want to be lazy. I mean, there's always usually an easier way to fret something or play something. And, uh, you know, I've always tried to go the opposite way. It's like, how can I challenge myself with this? And, um... So I'm using multiple fingers for that part. And that's basically a D harmonic minor. sound. Um, we've talked about harmonic minor a lot on this channel. We've got this little busy, you know, power chord riff with one finger power chords. And once again, I'm using multiple fingers. You could play that with just one or two fingers, 
but I'm trying to get as much, you know, in there as possible. <laughs> and ominous sounding uh, part. And then it jumps into this part. And that's basically a B-flat, flat five. You know, very dissonant and sinister, but it sounds really cool, you know, in the mix of the single note riff and the power chords riffs. Um. Right up next is Be Quiet and Drive, which is also from Around the Fur, and it's something like this. It's much quieter, obviously, and he's kind of implying an A major 7 and then moving up to a D major 7. And it's just a little partial chord, you know, the root, the fifth, and the major 7. And he has this kind of thinner, quieter tone, and then suddenly it kicks in and it's really loud. But uh, I do like those shapes, you know, it's kind of unusual, a little bit of dissonance, you know, from that major 7. And then here, uh, he's basically kind of implying D major. Because there he's hitting, you know, technically an F sharp octave. And then hitting the low, you know, D string because we're tuned down. So that's kind of implying like D major. Major, you know, open string and octave is then combined with this F sharp power chord, but you've got that B in the bass there, so it's like an F sharp five over B. sliding that little octave part and creating that little melodic, you know, pattern. And then back to that stack power chord. Right up next is the title track from Around the Fur and with uh, Around the Fur. we're creating this really ominous and dark and heavy sound and I love how he's just using like little pieces and parts of chords and you can hear um, you know in the beginning he's kind of hitting like that A flat and then there he's grabbing you know D with the open D and then C with that open D so it's just a D you know like a D octave and then C over D that's kind of like a D7 implied back to that A flat. But the interesting thing is the counting, you know, like the syncopation or whatever, because it's it's grouped in groups of three and then four. So it's like, you know, uh, one, two, well. You know what I mean? 
mean? So that's like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So it has this weird pull to it. kind of sliding into a D power chord and then grabs the flat nine right there, that E flat. This goes back to the root. You know, really cool riff. there is we're going to tune down an additional half step. So now we're tuned down a whole step and then drop D. And that was like the big noticeable shift, you know, between those two albums. And then after White Pony, that does seem like when that's when Steven just dove into seven strings, eight strings, and then obviously now he's playing with nine string guitars. But this is the song Passenger, and this also had a guest appearance with Maynard James Keenan from Tool, which that explains why, uh, Lateralis is up on the wall right there. I don't have any depth tones on vinyl, but I do have some tool. But anyway, uh, Passenger, something like this. two note riff, you know, one single note on the low E string and then a series of three different notes on the D string. So it's all implied chords. But I do like how he's basically playing with the minor third and then the flat nine again and then the root. So it creates this really, you know, dark sound. And there's that dissonance big time. You know, think of Fur Elise, you know, from Beethoven or something and that's the same interval but you know, obviously distorted on electric guitar. And when I meant the same interval, I meant that minor second, you know. You think of Jaws or something like that too. But then having that really dissonant note right in the middle, it kind of makes the first note, you know, seem a little bit more settled and then you have the really dissonant note, and then it revolves to the root, so then that dissonance is resolved. And um, you'll definitely find Deftones playing with dissonance. Sometimes they resolve it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just leave that hanging, you know, and kind of leave you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> Next we have the song Knife Party, or Knife Purdy, which is how it looks on White Pony. I guess it's missing the A, but uh, something like this. with this and it's obviously a little bit quieter in the beginning and then it gets really you know nice and loud but you're playing with this in the beginning so that's kind of like a partial you know f5 over c right there there's a couple different ways you could look at that too like you, you could also see that as a c11 i guess or a c sus4 but i'm looking at that as part of an f with a c in the bass and then it's going to hike all the way up here and there you basically have E over A right there. There's your E power chord. And then you've got that A in the bass because we're in drop D. But I do like that kind of transition between the chords. And 
even also is adding that C in there, so that's the sixth. Um, you know, if we're thinking of that E chord, you know, it's like a flat six. So that's the cleaner, kind of quieter part. And then when it gets loud and massive, you're doing this. You're doing kind of a bigger, uh, you know, F over C. But you're basically now grabbing that F in the root. So now it's just a big F power chord. Like that. Examples from Change in the House of Flies, and this is definitely one of Deftones most popular songs. Um, it was featured in the movie Little Nicky. It was also featured in Queen of the Damned. I think it pops up in an episode of American Dad. It also pops up in Dexter, and there's some other places too where you'll hear this, you know, as background music, whether on TV or in movies. But uh, something like this. <laughs> have that really ambient and kind of dark almost sinister you know kind of sound and there it, it kind of reminds me of uh, you know some of the stuff he was doing earlier you know be quiet and drive and in be quiet and drive you know we were tuned down a half step now we're tuned down a whole step but in be quiet and drive he was playing with the major third you know that F sharp and playing that octave you know against the low E open and then uh, change in the house of flies he's actually playing F natural with that low D open, you know, and that just little, you know, major to minor twist, you know, the major third to the minor third, you know, it gives you this, you know, kind of darker and sadder sound. And he's really just kind of plucking or, you know, kind of picking through that. You know, he's kind of accenting, you know, um, something like this. G power chord, it's going to move up to G minor implied, and then G9, G minor, G9 to, you know, that G5. You know, but the interesting thing with that song, it just has this very brooding and kind of ominous flavor. And it's just kind of crawling along, you know, and I think that's one reason why I like that tune, because it just, it just sounds different. It has this different vibe to it. Really cool. That's going to wrap this episode with the chords of Deftones, and definitely I'm a fan, and I was excited, you know, to see their announcements about the new album coming out next month, and, you know, I just started thinking about that. I did hear their sneak peek, you know, release that they released yesterday, or I guess the day before, but, uh, you know, I got caught up in that, and I thought, you know what, yeah, let's look at some Deftones. We can talk about, you know, drop tunings and some dissonance and some other riffs. And definitely an interesting band, you know, different. It, you know, I don't know, when you hear Deftones music, it doesn't really sound like anybody else. I don't know who to compare them to, because they do have their own flavor or their own approach, which is really inspiring. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it. more content and material. Thank you.